Hi, everybody. Welcome to Halftime Live on Brew Sports. We welcome you inside the Brew Sports studios on a Thursday edition of the program. First of all, I just want to—I just want to take a quick minute here. If we want to, I just want to apologize for the show yesterday. There was a lot going on yesterday. Tanner and I were both in moods. There's alcohol involved. We talked more about the Browns than we did about anything else, which is probably why we were so depressed. So I, I personally want to apologize. I don't know if you want to apologize or not, Tanner, but I'm going to at least apologize <clears throat> to the public for whatever display that was our show yesterday. It was more yeah. New England Patriots and Cleveland Browns talk than I need to do in an entire week. Just a week? Just a week. Oh. I'm being generous here. I know you are. You're a very generous guy. I have 30 seconds into the show, and I've already said the Patriots. <laughs> and you yell at me. I do. You're yes. like, would you stop with you the Patriots? It, you brought it. I'm not even a Patriots fan, and I still get accused of being a Patriots well, fan. Well, you, you threw a wild card at me and had a Patriots fan on our show yesterday. So We talked about soccer, though, so I feel like it couldn't have been that bad. I, I just had know. to throw that little extra nugget in there being like, oh, by the you way, can't. Tanner, she also is a... Patriots, you can't though. put me into a mood already, Baxter. It's 11 one I'm trying not to put you in a mood. Your, your beer is already warm, by the way. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Just want to throw that five, out there. I can't do this. I'm five seconds in. Five like, seconds in. The Patriots. God. Beer is warm. Anything else we need to get out of the Jeff way? Right hasn't away? Even, Jeff, Jeff hasn't even gotten on yet, and you're like, oh, your beer is warm. Mm. Like, don't feed. Don't. Don't feed the beast. Don't feed the wolves, man. It's more fun to do that, though. There, Jeff. Jeff just Jeff started watching. So, hi, Jeff. Good hi, to see Jeff. you. Hi, Jeff. Good morning. We are excited, though, for the show today, of course. We've got a lot of great stuff to get to. We are going to be joined in our second segment by one of our baseball correspondents, Jessica Kleinschmidt, to talk about the breaking news about Jose Fernandez. We're also going to give us – she's going to give us some tips about the fantasy baseball world. And, of course – Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. My boy. Who else are we going to talk about? My boy. God forbid the other hundreds of players that take place in Major League Baseball on a daily basis. Yes. Nobody cares. I care. You don't care, except for Tim. I care. I, I think we need a Tebow him, jersey. We need like, a, t- like, we need like a, 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 a wall plaque of Tim Tebow or something uh, on the backdrop. You know, I'm not even like a Tim Tebow fan. I just love the story. Do you? It's just so fun to talk about. All about the story. Like, who cares? Why not? Nobody cares, but we're talking about it. It's exactly. Great. It's, it's kind of so like, Le- like LeVar Ball. There, this, is, this is the first time since Michael Jordan that people have actually cared about minor league baseball. That's true. Hey, why not? Make baseball great again, I guess, right? Tim Tebow is the Wilson, man to do that. Russell Wilson got drafted by the Rangers, and every, we he talked did. about it for like five minutes, and everyone was like, but like, he's not going to stop playing football. No, because he's like, you want a Super Bowl, so why yeah. would you go? So, Easy does it, Russ. He's busy and smelling his Tebow. wife's back. So. Everyone's like, but maybe he can do it. I doubt it. It's the next I really doubt yeah, it. He's the next A-Rod. <laughs> he plays outfield. A-Rod played third, third base and shortstop. Tim Tebow can do whatever he wants, man. I guess so. Tim Tebow know. does what Tim Tebow does, I guess. I guess. Either I way, guess. we've got some good stuff in store for you today. It is Thursday, which means it's our Thirsty Thursday segment uh, to kick off the program. Tanner, what are you thirsty for today in the oh, sports world? Oh, boy, am I thirsty. Boy, oh boy, am I thirsty. Oh? NCAA, I'm thirsty for a bracket buster. Thirsty for a bracket thirsty buster. For why? A why do you want a? Buster. Why do you want a, a bracket buster? Thus, because this I early? picked so many upsets that the only way my bracket can be successful is if I bust every single other bracket out there. So you're going to be trying to be that guy. No, I am that guy. I know you are that guy. I am that guy. Do you want to go? We're just going right after it. Right no, after it. I have to preface by saying the the primary. <laughs> tournament that i play in every year is my father's Mm -hmm. and he puts all these weird crazy rules in there where if you pick an upset above a 10 seed you get bonus points so it encourages you to to think outside the box in turn it also makes you bust your bracket Mm -hmm. quite quickly so it's a game man um, don't listen to the man i'm gonna try i'm gonna try and pull up my bracket here but uh, i thought we were talking about our brackets later on in the show okay all right so i have time why are you you jumping i have time to do that well uh i have something else i'm thirsty for okay uh, Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. Are you thirsty for, for the $25 million each plus the pay-per-view negotiated deal? <laughs> I'm thirsty for all of the fans who are going to spend millions and millions of dollars to watch this fight mm-hmm. and be just as, if not more, disappointed than the mayweather uh, Pacquiao. I fight. think McGregor's going to at least punch instead of just hug him all for the entire time. It's a totally different game, man. You're walking into, you're walking into the ring with one of the best ever. And you're learning a different game. So, I think McGregor is going to come out a chance. I think he's going to come out swinging. He's, love, he's obviously just going to get like he's going to get dropped. I think. I would love to see Conor McGregor just beat the out. crap out of Floyd Mayweather. You would. Every, so I think team, everybody. So you're Team McGregor yeah. then. You're not I, Team Floyd. I think more more people would be on McGregor's side, but it's not going to happen because he's got like what six months to train for a boxing event. 
Well, I mean, he's already in really good shape. I mean, UFC, to yeah. an extent, you still have to punch in UFC. It's not like he doesn't. I know you can throw your legs and There's headbutt so many, people that's what I'm and saying. stab people and whatever else that you can do in the, the UFC The technique nowadays. is totally different. The technique is totally different. So You're right. We'll see. That's something that we'll have to talk about as a as a. I'm as excited. A it hasn't officially been confirmed yet, but as you said, Dana White is pushing for it. So that ultimately is what we care about is that the man himself yes. behind the curtain is trying to – he's kind of almost like the Wizard of Oz. He's trying to pull out the strings right. and be like, make me more money. Ha, 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 ha. Not that, not that people care, but I have one more thing that I'm thirsty for. I was going to say, this is the most thirsty you've ever been in show history. In <laughs> show history. <laughs> uh, I have one more thing. Okay. Um, it makes me excited because it's the 10-year anniversary. This, this coming uh, Winter Classic will be the 10-year anniversary of the first Winter Classic. Do you know where the first Winter Classic was played? I have a good, I have a good guess. It was in Buffalo, New York. Hey! 2008. Shout out to Sabres, the Bills. Sabres uh, versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, and it was the Sabres uh, most attended well, of course. Uh, game in, in NHL history at that time. I'm sure there were more And how the Sabres do in that game? Lost in a shootout. Lost in a shootout. That was the same. Okay. Well, okay. So we lost in a shootout that year. This is why mm-hmm. I hate Sidney Crosby. He ruined our hopes and dreams at Ralph Wilson Stadium mm-hmm. in Buffalo for the first outdoor game played in the NHL. And then two years later, uh, my boy Ryan Miller is taking charge behind the, in the net. What up, big Ryan? Uh, in between the pipes at the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Mm. Guess who scored the game-winning goal on my boy? <sighs> for Team Canada. Sidney Crosby. Boom. Can I tell you a quick story about that real quick? Why not, since we're okay. on this topic? I might as well. <laughs> so I was actually, I was out here uh, f- uh, f- at Marquette. Mm-hmm. I was, it was in February, and I was doing a like pre-orientation thing. Okay. And it was the same, yeah. like I, I told my dad, I was flying home the day of the gold medal game. Okay. I said, record it. I'm not going to look at, listen to, yep. well, anything related. Said I will not allow anybody to ruin this game for me. It's it was I mean makes sense. The whole day, whole day. I get all the way home. All the way home. I get off the plane, take my headphones off. Mm-hmm. I hadn't even gotten out of the jetway yet. Mm. Some guy goes, "Can you believe Sidney Crosby scored the game-winning <laughs> goal in overtime?" And I was like, Are "You kidding me?" I was so pissed. I was so pissed. <laughs> But yeah, so I hate. Uh, that's why I hate City Crosby. But yeah, so I think he's uh, a great player. He's a Hall of Famer. Best uh, to ever play the game. Watch the, out, Wayne Gretzky. The, the Buffalo Sabers and the New York Rangers. This is a. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm it, but I saw a source of a, a, a news station in New York ah. who said that they were close to finalizing a deal for a Rangers Sabers Winter Classic Ooh. in New York City at uh, City Field. I think they should just play at like Times Square. How come we don't, we don't see more right. things in Times Square? That would be epic. They fit all those people in there for New Year's. Right. Why you not could throw a hockey, hockey rink out there, there somewhere. Just shut that it all down. That would be so great. You're welcome. That would be so sweet. Yeah, you're welcome Changing for the, the game. You're welcome for the uh, for that idea. But yeah, so everybody. I'm, I'm thirsty and hungry for that for that deal to get finalized. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, well, you basically took all the time for thirsty Thursdays, so no, I am are I am you thirsty. I am, I, I am adequately hydrated today, actually. Are so you? I feel great with my life are today. You, you just so. didn't prepare. No, I could have been thirsty about wanting, you know, millions of dollars from Warren Buffett's bracket challenge, but that's not at all what I'm thirsty about. Sorry, anymore. I took, so, all your, took all your time. Completely fine. Um, Corey on Facebook says, I love how Tanner talks about Baxter talking about the Patriots as he talks about the Patriots. You know, Corey's one of my biggest fans. Is he? Yeah. Why do you yeah. say that? Uh, he's just, you know, he, I don't, I just think he, he, he loves our show. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, pretty sure he... You know, I get fan mail from him all the time. I'm sure you do. All the time. Email, snail mail. Snapchats. AIM. All M- of the MSN, above. Yahoo. Yeah, all of the above. Uh, one of my biggest fans. So I always, always have to give a shout out. What up, CPS? I always have to give a shout out. Love it. David also says, I feel like Tanner's beer should be recognized as, as an official co-host. <laughs> Usually, it's here. It usually has more to say and is more diverse than what usually uh, Tanner comes up with at times. So that makes David it is also on Team Tanner. Everybody's on, Team, on Tanner. Team Tanner. Nobody yes. loves Team Baxter, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, uh, real quick though, go uh, ahead. Corey inspired me to do this. Did he? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Keep your clothes on. What are you doing? I don't have time for this. Should I do it you, slow? I mean, do we need to go to like a Kurt? Oh, what? What is this? Team, Team Berg, Berg lifetime member. Well, I'd hope so. They don't just give these out. They don't, do they? They don't just give these out. How do I get a Team Burke Lifetime Member shirt? 
Uh, you got to ask Turbery. Turbery's yeah, got the so man. So Team Break, Lifetime member, Corey, one of these is coming your way, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite the, uh, quite the thing there, that's for sure. Uh, Aaron says that oh, Times Square gosh. isn't big enough. Um, uh, you know, that's, here's, here's the deal. You could figure it out. The, Put it up on, like, stilts and just for the, For the NHL. Play three on three. They, they're not going to make their money off of people who are watching. The, who are people, they're not going to make their money off of people at the game. Okay? So they don't care how many people are going to be able to go there. It's all about the historic value and the entertainment value. So if they were to actually build a rink in Times Square mm-hmm. and just let whoever's there watch it, People around, people around the world are going to be like, they're playing a hockey game in Times Square? Like, shut it down. Are you serious? I think it's a great idea. Let's awesome. go find the dimensions. Let's go measure. Let's make it happen. I'll call, uh, I'll call Gary Bettman. You got a guy? The commissioner. I'll, a guy I'll, there. I'll let him know. I love it. All right, let's get to our baseball correspondent, Jessica yes. Kleinschmidt, uh, so we can talk about the latest news here in the baseball world. Uh, Jessica, a very good morning to you. Uh, apologies for Tanner in advance for whatever he may say. I just feel like <laughs> I need to start all of our interviews like that, just so that way everything is covered now that I've yes. covered Tanner. Jessica, how are we right. doing today? Welcome to, uh, welcome to Halftime. Thanks for having me. Actually, my, my family has to introduce me, like, or... Like, just to warn you about her, she has a foul mouth, and she's super inappropriate, so I get it. Oh, wow, so <laughs> yeah. you, guys, like, yeah. you guys are already best friends then, yeah, basically. Yeah, so pretty much, yeah, we're BFFs, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, well, Jessica, some very interesting news breaking this morning about Jose Fernandez. Uh, as many folks know, there was a, a tragic incident that took place a couple months ago. Uh, but new information coming out now this morning. Uh, what exactly have we learned about what happened to Jose Fernandez that, that tragic morning? Um, Well, there was a lot of investigations that were going on in regards to the accident that did occur six months ago, and it was mainly about was this Jose Fernandez's fault, and um, unfortunately, it turns out after six months of a lot of investigating, uh, the reports that Jose's legal counsel said that Jose gave the wheel to his friend were actually, you know, denied, and it did show that there were DNA traces of Jose Fernandez's DNA all over the steering wheel and the throttle and everything like that. So, unfortunately, he was at fault for the incident. Uh, we already knew there was cocaine and dr- um, alcohol in his system. He was actually over the legal drinking limit um, as far as, you know, driving anything let alone um, a boat. But so um, unfortunately, um, everything was considered his fault. If he were to live, Lord knows what kind of types of trouble he could be in. But I really wanted to make sure that people don't paint Jose Fernandez in a negative light. He was a wonderful human being. And I've been covering the story um, since it came out. And it really affected me personally. I've been covering the kids since he was younger. So it, it was yeah, some unfortunate incidents, but I don't want that to take away from his beautiful legacy. No, it's it's tough because when you have millions of dollars at your disposal, it's it's easy for some of these players or celebrities even to get a hold of certain the substances yep. and often abuse it. So there is, I think, there is a line where the the general public just doesn't care if they are doing drugs or if they are going out and getting crazy. Right. But it's, I mean, how do you? It obviously we don't want to, like you said, put Fernandez in in a bad light, but. Where do you draw the line? I mean, uh, some players are going to do drugs. Some players are going to drink. I mean, in a, in a situation mm-hmm. like this where there is uh, a, a number of deaths involved, uh, it's it's tough to swallow. Right, and he's unfortunately not around to defend himself, right? So, unfortunately, all we remember is what he, you know, the person that he was. And I'm not the type of person to be like, you know, what, you're a bad person. I've never, you know, personally met him but I do know a lot of his teammates and um, they've never said one negative thing about him even before um, his accident. So we do paint these athletes in a certain light. And, you know, I'm obviously also a, a fantasy baseball analyst. So I sometimes look at these guys as the numbers, which I ultimately personally hate as, as my job. Um, sometimes I go home and think, wow, I looked at him as a number as opposed to the fact that this person's going home to a wife and kids, to his own family, what have you. So that's the thing that I, I try to balance that out as much as possible. But, you know, we all have our demons. He definitely did. He was he was upset that night. And there was, um, I've heard multiple reports why he was upset, whether it was he, um, a pitching scenario, he was upset with his girlfriend, um, a lot of different types of, of types of scenarios, if you will. And, you know, I don't, 
I'm not going to put him in any sort of darker situation. I, I still have sympathy for him, especially his family. I also covered Jordana Ventura when he um, passed away in his accident. And the thing that I worry about is the son. Is his girlfriend just gave birth to a son not too long ago. And I remember when Jordana Ventura passed away, um, they were looking at his toxicology reports. And if there was any sort of substance um, in his system, that would be ultimately, you know, do, do the royals pay any sort of money towards his family. And that's what I'm worried about. I want to make sure that his son is taken care of. You know, you're used to having all this money, then all of a sudden that's taken care of or taken away from you. So that's where my mentality goes. Um, athletes definitely are a different type of, of individual, if you will. Like I couldn't be a professional athlete, not just because I lack the talent, but well, that's probably because I just don't I lack the talent. It's five nothing. What am I going to do? Um, so it's kind of like that. But I definitely feel for the guy. Uh, we put these guys on pedestals. So sometimes I wish we could step back and remember these people are humans, if you will. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it is just a really ser- awful series and of unfortunate events. I don't think it's I don't think it's a uh, uh, a secret that it is a freak accident, but. Do you look at the people around these these players and these celebrities and say, hey, they need to take a little bit more responsibility for their colleagues and, and uh, teammates, uh, put, take a little bit more of that responsibility on themselves? Uh, but there are people like Will Bernal. Uh, he told Rivero uh, that it was a horrible idea to let Fernandez go out on the water. But ultimately, yes, you can't stop Fernandez from doing what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. So do you raise awareness? Do you uh, try and get people to you can step only, up? Well, you can only micromanage people so much, though. I mean, you can you, – I know I can tell you, Tanner, please don't go drink 10 beers tonight and, you know, take your shirt off and streak through the downtown Milwaukee, but you still might do it. Like, still going to do I it. I can voice my opinion you to you. You would do it with a sip of beer. You That's would do right. it with a sip of beer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep, exactly. But this, this, I, dad bod <laughs> this dad bod don't lie. But, I mean, you do lie. raise a good question, though, and, Jessica, I want to get your opinion about that. Is there a way to combat this at all that – Aside from basically, you know, not tying them up, being like, okay, like you can't leave, like stay here kind of a thing. Don't go be an idiot. Right. It's actually a wonderful question. Um, I was on the conference call with Dayton Moore after Jordana Ventura passed away. And Moore himself said that before anything happens, he stresses safety, whether it's drinking and driving or anything like that. And that's not just athletes, you know, that's anyone. And he said himself, I'm talking to these kids from the lower levels all the way up. And sometimes when you're lecturing them, it goes in one ear and out the other. And that doesn't just, I'm not going to stop at athletes. I really, I, 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 I defend these guys, you know, left and right. Some of them are my dear friends, their wives and girlfriends are good friends of mine. And they do have lives themselves, but I get it. They have a different type of job, but every move that they make is in the public eye. If I were to do something behind my closed doors, would anybody hear about it? Probably not. But a lot of people, they're all constantly underneath the spotlight. We can tell somebody they're blue in the face. How many times do you have a girlfriend who's in a really crappy relationship, but she stays with them anyway? Mm-hmm. She's not going to listen to us. And it's vice versa, right? Um, whether it's um, domestic violence, anything like that. People don't understand that, you know, and a lot of times they have to learn those lessons the hard way. This is a really crappy way to learn it, but you know, they're not going to really listen to you. So Dayton Moore Royals talks to all these kids and your Donna Ventura still ended up dead. So these things do happen, unfortunately. Unfortunately. And I mean, it's one of those situations that we hope will not happen very frequently, I guess, going forward in any, in any realm, I guess, whether it be sports or just in general. I mean, anytime something like this happens, you have to feel for the families that are certainly affected because of that. So kind of moving away from that, uh, Jessica, as you mentioned, you are a, a fantasy baseball guru, a lover of things, of numbers, uh, I, I'm looking at ESPN's top 100 fantasy baseball players right now, and of course, lo and behold, who's number one but Mike Trout. Uh, do you agree with, with Mr. Trout being ranked number one, and uh, who are some of the people you are exceptionally excited for this season for fantasy baseball in that regards? Of course, I agree that Mike Trout, his ADP is always going to be one or two. It's always it's going to be between him and Bryce Harper, right? Um, but there's a couple of ringers out there. Manny Machado is always like a top five for me as well. And um, it's kind of fun because beyond the number one, the number two ADP, who else do you care about? And that's to me is the more important thing. You know who's going to get the first overall pick? It's always going to be Mike Trout. And it obviously depends on what kind of draft you're in. I'm more of a daily fantasy sports girl. And that's more fun because you have to think about the ownership. Mike Trout's always going to be the number one target depending on his matchup. But they're, the guys that I'm kind of excited about are not necessarily the first or second rounders but more towards the third, fourth, fifth rounders, depending on, you know, you take the pitching out of it. The pitchers for me are kind of like, well, you obviously know who the top pitchers are, but you can kind of get into depth that uh, guys like, like rookies that are really going to stand out this year that I love paying attention to because 
I know you guys are talking about going into the thing. Nobody cared about minor league baseball until Tim Tebow played. That's BS. I love him so much. <laughs> we knew we were going to find somebody that backlashed us a little bit. That's yeah, completely fine. Yeah, about it. Gary Sanchez was once a minor league baseball player. Aaron who? Judge was once a minor league baseball player. All these guys were. And who do they come not? Who's door do they come knocking on when they get bumped up because they want to know about it? Uh, Jessica Kleinschmidt. That's who. Uh, because they don't want to be they don't pay attention to these guys uh, when they're playing in the PCL or in a different across the war, the country, you know. And so when they get bumped up, they're like, well, I haven't been paying attention. I was like, oh, yeah, now you want to send me cookies and, and flowers. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's really, so those are my favorite guys to watch. You know, Mitch Hanniger is going to go into his first hopefully full rookie season. Um, he was just traded from um, the – Arizona Diamondbacks to the Seattle Mariners. And that was just the Mariners got 13 offseason trades, a lot of weird trades kind of deal. It was very Billy Beanish where you're like, I don't know what he's doing, but hopefully it works out for him. <laughs> Good and, luck. And, That's you know, all we can say, really. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to pray for you kind of deal. So Mitch Hanniger was interesting because he actually played for um, the Reno Aces and here for Reno. So I got to watch him a lot. And in the Pacific Coast League, like us three, 220 batting average, it's a hitter's heaven. They hit the crap out of the ball. So when those guys get bumped up, I don't get too crazy over them because most of the time they're not going to be so great. You watched Peter O'Brien last year. It was the same scenario. So it's definitely something that I pay attention to. So the Mitch Hanegers of the world are the guys that I like to watch. The Brent Honeywells, he, of course, um, will probably start in double-A and maybe get promoted to triple-A, or he'll start in triple-A and go up from there. Those are the guys you really need to pay attention to. And if you look at the, the New York Yankees, they're all babies, right? You know, minus Chris Carter, who really, you know, made that median age really more even when he got signed. Um, the great birds of the world, Clint Frazier, they're all younger and a lot of times people weren't paying attention to them. So when they get bumped up, it's kind of like, oh, crap, what do I do with it? So if you pay attention to a lot of the rookies, you stash them in some of your leagues, you could really be successful, especially if they go off. So those are the types of guys that I pay attention to. You can have your Mike Trouts. You can have your Manny Machados. You can have your, Mike, you know, the Trumbos, if you will. But you have to really pay attention to the guys that aren't getting a lot of attention because if you're in a DFS league, they're lowly owned and they can go off and then you didn't spend a lot of money and you get to brush your shoulder off and be the pimp of the day. So it's kind of cool in that aspect. So those are kind of the guys that I like to pay attention to. Tanner very much is about the being the pimp of the day, I feel like. The pimp of the the day. day. (laughs) I've never heard that expression before, but uh, you've heard it here first on halftime that you want to be the pimp of the day. Jessica, we actually have a question for you on Facebook from one of our viewers. David wants to know, uh, your thoughts on outfielder depth, especially in a five outfielder league? It said it gets pretty ugly when you're trying to fill that, that fifth spot. Uh, your thoughts about David and his outfielder question? It really depends on which part of the outfield you're looking for. And, you know, for me, a lot of my leagues I actually go power heavy and then <clears throat> figuring out where you can actually put them. But then towards the middle of the league, you're going to want some speed. So if you actually go power heavy, don't feel too bad. But you have to think about what do you want. So there's a, a situation where Josh Reddick is constantly being brought up in a five um, outfielder type of league. And he's something that I really have to think about, um, especially in the team that he's playing with now. He played a lot in the AL West, so he's familiar with it. Um, the new ballpark minute made it really difficult to hit at, so that's always something to think about. You really have to <clears> – <throat> you're not going to want a really extremely power-heavy hitting fifth outfielder, right? But you also want to make sure, can I get something for him? You're always going to think about, okay, can I trade for some speed? Can I trade for like a lefty bat, what have you? So definitely keep that in mind. It really depends on what you're looking for. Um, and, you know, try to get more towards the speed with the center fielder, right and left field. Left field too, I'm more of a power girl, but right field, you can kind of have fun with it. They're not always going to be the, the most power hitting guys, you know, I guess mentioned Josh Reddick or anything like that. You can have like a George Springer type of scenario where he is kind of known for his power, but he's also going to swipe some bags for you as well. So it really depends on what mentality you're thinking of in that aspect. Now I, I have a, I have a question uh, real quick before we let you go. The world needs to know the world needs to know <laughs> there is a player in the minors right now who is red hot and he's coming off of his first two-hit day, raising his Red average to a is whopping two one four. Sure. Yes, tell me about Tim Tebow. What is, the world needs to know? Okay, so I love Tim Tebow to raise his pieces, um, but I think the media hype's kind of exaggerated. I actually am really good friends with one of his teammates. He's from this area. He's playing with the Mets organization right now, Mickey Janis. And he's just saying, like, all they're really doing is practicing. And it's kind of like whatever. He's kind of – Tim Tebow's kind of keeping to himself. But he is aware of all the hype that's around him, so he's going along with it. He did have his first two-hit game, and he made a diving catch. So he's actually, 
you know, looking like um, a baseball player. But my huge concern is he's trying too hard and not to the show off. But a lot of these guys, you know, in spring training aren't going to be trying really hard. They don't want to get hurt. Right. They don't want to do anything too crazy where they're going to end up gassing out by the time April 1st runs around. So I think that's why he's he was hitting all those bombs in batting practice. He's putting all of his effort into it. But you can't really do that at spring training. That's why you're not seeing a bunch of guys that are going four for four or have is hitting for the cycle, if you will, because they they don't want to get hurt. So I'm worried that he's trying too hard. Um, he is just a, a natural athlete, so I don't think he knows how to hold back. But it's also his first spring training, right? So it was his first AFL, so he doesn't really know what to expect. I think if he does come back, you know, which he might. He's a little bit of an older prospect. We'll see what happens. But he is looking like a baseball player. He's giving into the media. He's giving us what we want. And that's kind of all that we're really asking for him. But I think it is being exaggerated. I do see him getting promoted. I don't think it will be to, you know, be the determinant of being like a triple A championship kind of deal. But I do see him um, selling some tickets. And the Mets are aware. I wish people would back off and say, oh, my gosh, it's so stupid. It's just a publicity set. Well, yeah, we're trying to bring more fans into baseball because it is kind of a dying sport. So I wish people would calm with that. Um, anything that would really help. But he's, he's out there. He's playing well. So I wish people would kind of back off of him he's he's a great guy and he's doing what he needs to do so it just kind of is what it is exactly well oh, go ahead i have i have one more question uh in regards to having such a polarizing figure come in after failing in another professional sport uh you said you're close with some of the people in the locker room how i mean how could it what, what would it be like as a player to have some guy basically come in and say yeah i'm just gonna try this sport now it's that's a great question. It was a roller coaster um, from the very beginning. Um, a friend of mine who was in the Cubs organization got cut and he um, called me really upset and just alone because he got cut. Two weeks later, Tim Tebow is all of a sudden playing on the team and he calls me again and he just livid. And that it started out really rough, right? It was like, okay, well, this is this is crappy. I, that's not fair to me. I didn't get the chance. But all of a sudden, Tim Tebow makes a call to his agent. And he has a chance to play in Arizona Fall League. So that's step one. Step two, Tim Tebow goes out there and he gives in the media, gives us what we want. That's step two. Then it kind of was like, okay, well, he's a great guy. He's putting himself out there. And the athletes that I have talked to are kind of calming down now. They're like, okay, well, you know, he's nice. He asked for a chance and he got it, and it is what it is. And even I talked to Tyler Hansborough recently. He is a you know former college basketball mm -hmm. player, and he even said, you know what, good for him. Why not, right? And you know, and especially at his age, where he's kind of doing the opposite. At that age, you know, there's the WBC. They're trying to come back. Ryan Dempster was pitching for Canada for crying out loud. Like these guys are trying to make a comeback, play the sport that they love, what have you. You know what I'm saying? So he's um, definitely. There's a lot of torn type of mentality, but from the last couple of weeks, it's actually been a lot of positive stuff around him because he is such a great guy. He's not showboating too much. He's just a really good athlete, and he's kind of just showing that. So it's definitely been a roller coaster of emotions from the players. All right, Jessica, well, we appreciate you taking the time to join us on the program today. Uh, where can people find your writing and find you on social media as well to stay up to date with all the great baseball stuff that you churn out for us? Yeah, you can find me on um, Twitter at KleinschmidtJD. Um, baseball's right around the corner. I'm getting ready to start with fan graphs, fan rag, MLB, MSN Sports, Yard Barker, sports, not everything you can imagine. I'm pretty much there. I also have my uh, Facebook page, uh, Jessica Kleinschmidt, um, on there. You can just search me there. And that's where you can find all of my fun baseball stuff. Fantastic, Jessica. Wonderful. Thanks so much for your insight. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Exactly. All right, there goes Jessica Klein-Schmidt here on Halftime. Uh, we got to get into some breaking news here really fast. Yes, uh, we do. According to uh, Chris Moore is the one that provided it to us here on you, Facebook. Sir. But he says, CBS Sports website crashes an hour before games tip off today. Brackets cannot be filled out in time. Game, games tip website comes back uh, on minutes later. Hacking anyone? Now, question mark, question mark. Now, as we talked about, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, $10.4 billion, over $10.4 billion is being bet on this tournament. Yes. Most of that being illegally, but there, people use these platforms to get their brackets done. To have something like that go down an hour before, that's going to screw with a lot of people all, all around the country, or all across the country. Uh, it did come back on minutes later. However, I mean... I mean, is this a problem that, yeah. for procrastinators, though? I mean, I am that guy, though. Before, well, yeah, before, that's why you were late today, because you were like, sorry, I was filling out my bracket. I did. I mean, so a couple of my friends, I'm in a bracket uh, on CBS Sports. I'm on a couple of them, but 
Uh, one of them happens to be on CBS Sports, and I filled it out right before I came to the studio today. Mm-hmm. So thankfully, thankfully, I didn't wait on that one that that longer than I already right. did. But yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> that's gonna take off a lot of people. Yes, I certainly think it will. We'll have to keep an eye on that as it develops. Uh, while we're on the topic of the NCAA tournament, um, I do want to talk to uh, reference a couple other comments here that we got as well, too. Jeff says, so if Tebow does well, he's trying too hard. If he does poorly, he's a bust. It is kind of a, kind of a weird situation that you have to be in if you are Tim Tebow. You're never going to make everybody happy, and I think that's just you know, welcome to real life, basically, where you can never make everybody happy, sometimes even yourself. As long as he's happy and he's enjoying what he's doing, I think that really is the big key in a lot of this. We just want Tim Tebow to be happy. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. We just care about you, Tim. I'll hug you if you want to hug. Tim's, very, one, of my, Tim's uh, one of my biggest fans. He is. So is Corey. So is Aaron. So is Jeff. Him Everybody brew. loves Tanner. Nobody loves Baxter. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, Aaron says, to some Tebow can't lose, to others he can't win. Hashtag you know, love, hate, uh, basically sort of relationship going on. Uh, Adam also uh, was commenting, saying that he uh, got drunk with 10 beers last night and streaked through downtown Milwaukee, apparently, as well. I was with him. So I was with him. And I cared about you guys, and I was very sad <laughs> sad about that. Uh, Tom says, Tanner is, on, is in my pool. Good luck, LOL. Ooh. He, see, he is Shade. watching. He's always Tom watching. Tom is always watching. Yeah, my, my dad Lesson gave, number one of hosting <laughs> halftime. Tom my dad is always gave up watching. commenting and posting on Facebook for How's Lent. that going for he him? He gave it up for Lent. And then <laughs> once, of course, like we started our shows mm-hmm. right when Lent started. Right. So he, Ash Wednesday, he changed his Lenten promise. To, to How do you allow feel about Bru- that your father Bruce broke Sport. his vow to the Lord Almighty just to keep an eye up on you? I think that's it's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> uh, that's, no, between, that's between no, you and the big man. I'm not going yes. to get in between yes, you and that one, right, obviously. That's right. That's right. I wish you well. That's okay. all I say. I wish you well. So, what, else is, what else is going on? Well, talk to me about your bracket here, I guess, oh, because we've got right. the NCAA tournament rolling along. Well, um, Unfortunately, everything is closed now for the Brew Sports yes, Bracket Challenge. Uh, we wish true. all of you the very best. First prize, $100. Second place is these sweet, freaking awesome, bomb-ass Brew Sports t-shirts that are form-fitting, sleek, and cozy all at the same time. Don't forget Team Burke. It's in there. All right. We're uh, not giving away a Team Burke uh, shirt. No, no. Are you making – do you want Contact to like, – I don't know. Agents. I guess how do you want to do this? Do you want to just talk about the opening round or give our predictions fast? Do you want to just um, say your Final Four? Like, what's the best way to go about doing uh, this? Um... Let's let's just talk about who's playing today. We'll just go over that real quick, and okay. then we can go into who who is playing today. I don't even know. Uh, I'm just gonna pull. A I lot of people are playing that. today. That's not like I'm not so saying that games, I don't know. I'm just saying that there's so much that I forget. Who's there's here. only one game in play right now, and that is Notre Dame number five, Notre Dame versus Princeton, and they are mm-hmm. up uh, by one point, fifteen to fourteen. Uh, with 11:38 in the first, so we're we're in it. At least that, that's a that's a close game to start it's up. It started. Start uh, UNC, Wilmington, Virginia, uh, Winthrop Butler at 12.30, South Dakota State taking on number one Gonzaga at 1 o'clock, Bucknell, Virginia, West Virginia at 145, East Tennessee State, Florida, Middle Tennessee, Minnesota, Vanderbilt, Northwestern at 3.30, Xavier versus Maryland, uh, Mount St. Mary's versus Villanova, VCU St. Mary's, Vermont, Purdue at 6.30, Florida Gulf Coast versus Florida State. I want to talk about that in one second. But Virginia Tech, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Arizona, Nevada, and Iowa State. Okay, Florida Gulf Coast and Florida State. Sure. Dump uh, City, baby. I talked about this with one of my friends last night. Okay. The selection committee says it's a coincidence. That, they, that two Florida teams are playing each other? In Orlando. I mean, FGCU's from Fort Myers. FSU's That's from That's like wearing a red shirt and telling me it's blue. That's not at all the same. Come on, man. They're play- if you're, I understand why the they do this. The final four is in Arizona's backyard. I get it. I know. I understand why they do this. I understand why they do these things. It's regional. You, it's, That's all it is. It's ratings. It's ratings. It's ratings. Well, also Are ratings. Are you kidding me? It's regional. It, it, I don't know. I'm just saying if, I mean, you, if I you're going to set things up to, to, to get ratings sure. and get viewership, at least be honest with me. At least be honest with me. I'm honest with you. Jeez. Uh, I'm being you honest you with are. you right now. <laughs> It's Orlando. It's not a home game I for either it. of these teams. I know. I, under, I understand that. You, of all people, would, would know because you're from Florida. You're a Florida guy. So. I don't um, know much, but what I do know But what I things do know, are in Florida. Yes. Well, I think, I, think uh, I understand why they do it. And, and, and that's why some teams do get in and some teams get it, don't make it. Sure. Uh, just much like the, uh, for the NCAA football playoffs. I understand why they choose certain teams. Sure. They have, yes, they have the resume, but 
That's also why lesser-known teams will never make it into the football, true. college football They playoffs. don't care. They want the money. Uh, here's another one. Kentucky versus Northern Kentucky. What about it? What about it? What of it? Come off it, man. I well, guess, where's the game I guess being we're played? done here. I guess we're done What's here. The game? Where's sorry. the game being played? Unbelievable. Is it being played in, in, in Kentucky? Uh, Indianapolis. Okay, then you're, then you're fine. Whatever. You're, you're just mad because of the seating is really what you're mad at, is what you're telling me, I'm right? not. I'm not. So you're I saying think Marquette should be a higher seed, but two, it, it benefits me in my, my tournament, so I'm not worried about it. You're saying two teams from the same state shouldn't be allowed to play each other in the first round? It'd the be first like round? Michigan playing Michigan State in the first round. That's not okay. Well, you can't put teams from the but same conference the in, though, like here's that. Here's the thing. You can't do okay. that. This is, this is why I have a, pr- a problem with it. So okay. Kentucky playing Northern Kentucky. One's a two seed, one's a 15 seed. Sure. They wanted Florida Gulf Coast to play Florida or uh, FSU. I mean, FSU. So, does that affect the seedings of these teams so that these two teams can play each other for ratings? Does it? Because that conspiracy may, that may affect other teams in that region. So I'm just saying it's ridiculous to me. It's almost as ridiculous as a play in eleven game. Hmm. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah, I don't understand the whole play in eleven game. I thought the sixteen seeds always had to play in, and then I saw that there's a play in eleven well, game. Well, it's not fair. And maybe these... maybe this is just my ignorance about college basketball. But I was like, what the hell is this? Like, why why do we care that there's two eleven seeds? Like, it should be the sixteen That's what I'm seeds saying. because you're the last ones to make it in. They what? Why? How is it? Like, how sh- how are you being rewarded as an eleven seed? You're not by having to play another game. It doesn't make any only sense. Only one. Only one though. Like, it's it's not all eleven seeds. You know what I mean? So Obviously. I don't get that. That's another problem. But the the tournament itself is. I great. agree. The we asked uh, we asked you guys yesterday for the uh, for your your um, your final four predictions, uh, just your your general bracket knowledge as you've as you've got it. So make sure you comment below. Uh, make sure you share this comment, episode share, as well. Comment, share, be a part of our discussion. We Tell love you me all. why I'm wrong. We love you all. James Tell says Grayson Allen versus Lonzo Ball Championship, the most hated oh game God. ever. Oh I would agree God. with that. We're going to get into that later, trust me. Corey wants to know um, how Wisconsin got an eighth seed. He thinks it's BS. Well, yeah, that's the debate that's been raging for a long time because they had a better regular season record than Minnesota, but Minnesota yeah. was the better this and Whatever. the better that, and the committee just hates Wisconsin. That's all. Tell me about do. your bracket. My bracket? What do you want to know about my bracket? Okay, I'll tell I've you about my bracket. Because I've got a lot of things bracket. about bracket. Well, I'll tell you, you about my bracket. Don't ask me a question, then deviate <laughs> from me. No, you asked me a question, I will answer. I just said I wanted more clarification. Well, then tell me about it. What's going on? Who do you got? I, Who's your where? winner? What? You need to be more specific. Don't tell Who's me. Who's your winner? Of, of the whole thing? Tournament. Of the whole dang thing? <laughs> the world needs to know. Okay, it's Michigan. Oh, my God, what is wrong with you? Michigan, UNC is my right side of my Final Four. Virginia, Gonzaga is my left side. <sighs> Michigan beats Zaga 64-60. to 60. Oh, you don't have Michigan playing Michigan State in the Elite Eight? I'm not that kind of a tool. Unbelievable. Michigan State's going to beat Kansas. Kansas in Michigan? Uh, Michigan yeah. State and Kansas are going to play in the next round. Kansas is going to curb stop Michigan State. Whatever. I have a different bracket than you. I have UNC beating Arizona. It's too hard to repeat. We talked about this. I have Villanova in yeah. my Final Four along with UNC, Arizona, and Louisville, but it's too hard to repeat. Oh, really? You got, you got the Cardinals I think, going that far, I think huh? they're the team to beat. Don't get Who's me wrong. Nova or Villanova? Villanova. But I don't think they're going to do it. And it's, it's been too long since UNC's won a tournament. What has it been, like three years? <laughs> <laughs> it's been far so, too long. You must be good uh, again. Let me tell you why my bracket is going to either make or break my March Madness season. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So upsets are great. Everybody loves upsets. I think this is the year. I don't. I didn't choose it just because I'm not that stupid. But I think this is the year. The year a 16 seed really beats a one seed. Who though? Gonzaga. What? What? Yes. Come San on, Diego now. State coming not- off coming off a hot a hot win. Uh, they're a scrappy team, and Gonzaga is huge. Huge. And we'll they're literally, the they will literally yes. murder them. They're the biggest team. Gonzaga's the best team, the biggest team, but they're going to lose to a 16 seat this year. No, they're not. It might happen. You heard it, it here first. It won't happen. It no one else happen. is talking about it, so you better root for it to happen because then we can replay it and say, hey, Remember Tanner said time? it's going to happen. But I get he, that. He didn't have, he didn't have the, the set to – to commit to it in his bracket and choose them to win. So why are you going to be this guy? I might as well go out and say that happen. I think that you know every lower seeded team is going to win their first round so game. It's not going to happen. I might as well go out and say that now, even though uh, I didn't choose that. A couple other upsets. I think Xavier is going to beat Maryland, but I think it's going to be a good game. I think uh, KSU is going to beat Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I have another one. I, obviously, I had to choose Marquette. Marquette is my to, upset I had throughout the whole Marquette. tournament. I've got Marquette going to the. Uh, See, that's barely an upset. Eight. That's barely an upset. How is that barely an upset? If Marquette beats South Carolina, Duke. SMU and then ultimately loses to Virginia. Here's the deal: Marquette can play with anybody. I don't see how anybody. that's an upset. I feel like that. I feel like that. That's a big deal. Marquette can play with anybody. 
they are the best. No, they can. They are the best three-point shooting team in the country. Yeah, when it works. That's what I'm saying. So here's how it works. And this how is why it, it makes or they breaks. They make every basket? That's Yes, this of course is, that's how it a works. A team like this can either go far or get eliminated by any team. So they play down to teams because it's they— It's like saying the team that scores the most points will win the game. We know that. <laughs> can't do this. <laughs> I'm Marquette, just saying. and I, I, I know it's because I'm a homer, but I've, this, this is the team I've watched the most this year. So good, good for you. Marquette. Yeah, great team, great knocked guys. Knocked off the number one team in the country. I know how they did that. How they do that. They started playing defense. Villanova started missing shots, and Marquette started making threes. So when they make their three-pointers, mm-hmm. best three-point shooting team in the country, they can beat anybody. Mm-hmm. When they miss their three-pointers, when you have a cold day, they can lose to literally anybody. And that's the problem of yeah. – Three-point shooting being your bread and butter. You yeah. can't sustain. So Marquette's either going to come into this tournament hot or they're going to they're gonna disappoint. So. Simon thinks you're crazy about Gonzaga losing. Same with David as well, too. Everybody's going to think I'm crazy. Corey says, are you just biased, Tanner, because of your dad's bracket rules? Yes. And then Adam says the roof is the ceiling or whatever. The first, so. Let me put it in perspective. So the first round of my dad's tournament, How does this each work? win is worth 50 points. The okay. second round, each win is worth 100 points sure. and so on and so forth. But... If you pick an upset from a 10 seed or higher to win, you get 200 bonus points. That's how the ESPN bracket works. Jesus. If you get 10 points, you get 200 bonus points for every win that they get moving forward. So uh, in my tournament, I have Marquette winning all the way. Winning all the way. <laughs> no, I don't. I no, have UNC. No, don't lie to me. In any of my brackets, I have UNC and Arizona winning. I don't have anybody else. Why are you going with Arizona? What's so special about Arizona? Because the fact that they play the Final Jeez. Four in their backyard. I don't think that has that much to play. I'm surprised I'm not being crucified for my Michigan pick. I mean... And Virginia. No one's talking about Virginia. The Cavaliers, they're great. They mean well. Yes. They're doing what they can. Going to surprise some people. They would have to beat Villanova, and they'd have to beat Marquette. That's a big test. Then they would have to lose to Gonzaga to make my tournament perfect. My, I don't really have a ton of upsets. Let's be honest about this. If I'm looking across my bit here, the teams that are supposed to win will win for the most part. Um... I'm looking at Marquette is really my only outlandish. I've got East Tennessee beating Florida. Aside from that, everybody else is pretty much where they need to be. Rhode Island's going to be Creighton, and then Oregon's going to curb stomp Rhode Island, and then Michigan. <laughs> my dad's not going to like that. He'll be fine. I thought I'm not in his bracket. I didn't. I wasn't. I'm not Burke enough to be he's invited a, to the uh, the Burke family. Robinson he's a Creighton there. fan. I don't. I, I know he is. He's, a, he's an alum, good, isn't he? Uh, I have Creighton going to the Sweet 16. But good for you. In a in a in the real world, I think they're going to lose to Oregon. Yeah. I would agree with and you. And then Oregon's going to lose to Louisville. Also sounds right. So, but I got to I got to be a homer. I got to got to root for the Blue Jays. Woo, go homers. Anyways, okay. What else? So, are we done uh, with basketball? Virginia UNC <laughs> will be I got to watch this though. Notre Dame game. I really need to pay attention to that. Uh, and they're winning. Okay, they're up by four right now. There you go. UNC, Wilmington, and Virginia are tied to a piece. That game is oh, in the first in the first 50 seconds. It's a nail biter. To turn it on. What the um, Let's let's get out of this foot basketball world. Let's go to football for a little okay. bit because what we like football. football. Latavius Murray signing with the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Basically putting all rumors to bed that Adrian Peterson is making a comeback. Like so many folks were guaranteeing uh, he's just holding yes. out, he's holding out. He could, I guess, sure, maybe, but why do you need four running backs on your team if you're the Minnesota Vikings? You don't. So what good does have it have? Have you ever heard of the rare four running back set? Uh, on one of my Madden teams before, yes. Yes, okay. But no, it's, it's not like going to happen. Code. So Adrian Peterson... I've heard he might go to Oakland, which doesn't really make sense. because He's not going Oakland, to Seattle now. He's not, well, he could still if they're going the running back by committee. Yes. But Jamal Charles also had a visit there yesterday as well. Um, and Rex Burkhead to New England. Oh, that's right. Is that true? Uh, I think so. I think he's in New England. I think that's correct, yes. So they've already filled in their basically meaningless running back position. That's the thing with the Patriots, though. They always put somebody in that position who is – not too flashy, nothing really exciting. Mm-hmm. Never in the top, never in the top ten. You Who's know? this? Uh, the Patriots. I, for, I mean, it, was, for it happened with De- yeah, it happened with Deion Lewis. Even when Corey Dillon was on that team, the, a legend of the Patriots, Corey Dillon back in the day. I don't remember him ever being a high profile top five running back. In the right, league. right. James wants AP to go to the Packers. What am Adam I doing? says AP is coming to Buffalo. You guys have LaShawn McCoy. Shut your mouth. I. Yes. You don't need. It. I don't even think you would want him to be there, honestly. Well, would you want Adrian Peterson if you have LaShawn McCoy as well? I feel like you have to get rid of yeah. LaShawn McCoy. Sounds like such an exciting. That is such. That would be such a Buffalo thing to do, though. Or like Jamal Charles would be like, "Yes, we finally got Jamal Charles." Everyone in the locker room is just like, "Son of a." 
God. He doesn't but even have a two ACLs in, to stand on, but boy, we got Jamal Charles. Everyone in Buffalo is going crazy, cracking open the closest beer they can find. Meanwhile, the mayor of the city is giving T.O. the key <laughs> to the city. We just never let that will go. Let that go. We it? gave the key to the city to Terrell Owens. To Terrell Owens, can we get that back? No, that was non-refundable. a mistake. Non-refundable. Non-refundable. That was like that was that was it was a mistake. Yeah, uh, my dad wants you to know that he uh, never has and never will fill out a bracket. Fun fact. Do with that as you will. Unbelievable. I know. Trevor believes that AP will sign with the Raiders. I'll, I'll take, it's probably a smart move. I'll take that bet, Trevor. It's probably a smart move. Raiders versus the field, I'll take the field. Bet AP signs with somebody else. It's about time the Raiders. Your brother owes me lunch if that, if that doesn't happen. <laughs> Contingent upon T.O. giving the key back, yes. <laughs> we do need the key back. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> so where? Mayor where, Byron where, Brown's been locked out Adrian of his office Peterson for the last then? 20 years. What? Where is Adrian Peterson going? Should he go to the Giants? He's going somewhere that's going to win them a Super Bowl. Oh, the Giants. That, that is was enticing. the first rumor way out in the beginning. Uh, I will put you go the with an Giants. Up-and-comer? I will put the Giants. I will put the pa- uh, Patriots. The Patriots. The Patriots. and uh, Go Patriots. And Oakland's an, an exciting option. What about, as I'm looking here, what about Detroit? They're not too far off of a, being a playoff He's not contender. going to Detroit. No? No. What about Denver? Uh... I could see him going Cincinnati. to Denver. I could see him going to Denver. But like, it's going to depend on who's playing quarterback in Denver. That's true. What about Cincinnati? Cincinnati, A team yeah. that can't win a playoff game? Maybe Adrian Peterson is that, that mystical thing. What about the Jaguars? They've already built up a, no. a, a, everybody Nobody else. Nobody goes to the Jaguars. Except everybody in free agency. Nobody. Everybody has gone <laughs> to the Jaguars in free agency. Uh, yeah, I mean, Cleveland. I mean you, you look at the rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the league that has a shot generally at winning the playoff game. The Packers are one of the one of the last few teams that really could go there. I just want to know where the age he is going. It's frustrating, but I'm over it. I love are talking you, about it. I love so talking you're, you're about, about it. as over it as you are with Lavar Ball trying I just to take want to on know. Charles Barkley. Oh, come on! No, oh I God. handed you that segue. You did. I'm not going into it. Wait for what's for lunch. We're gonna wait till what's for lunch to talk Lavar Ball. You should drink more because people are yelling at you again. You guys, you guys are a horrible influence. Hashtag Tanner's beer is getting warm. <laughs> it's very cold. I Trending assure you, again. it's still quite cold. It's quite cold. It's at a perfect, a perfect uh, uh, forty-eight degrees, Kelvin. <laughs> sure, that's what it is. Uh, can we talk about real quick gambling and sports? I like gambling. I okay. mean, I don't appreciate what? gambling. <laughs> Okay. Talk. Uh, go. Right, give me so, your. Give, lend me your. Uh, ear, I teased it earlier. Ten point over ten point four billion dollars is going to be bet on the NCAA March Madness tournament in the United States alone, which is a lot of kashish. A lot kashish. of kashish. Care about the kashish. Let's talk about the the uh, overall gambling and sports in general. Okay. Uh, this it one happens on a consistent basis. This number is What's just your next point? this number is just on the NFL and college football this year. This will not Two, not so 2016 far. 2016 or 2000? this year the 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 2017 year. Okay, so this coming season. Okay, ninety five billion dollars is what will be gambled on on college football and professional football. Now, ninety five when you, billion dollars. When you say dollars. gambled, what does this mean though? Is this like the daily fantasy? Is this like yo daily fantasy? Twenty bucks says the Raiders uh, win. Anything. Uh, 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 prop bets, anything. Really? People 90, betting on teams what, to win, cover the spread. $95 billion. And 93 of that billion will be wagered illegally. Tanner can't afford a craft Well, beer, here's my, here's my point, though. World this is here. just football, and we know that March Madness in March, $10.4 billion is going to be bet. So, like, it, it gets up to the hundreds of, million, or hundreds of billions of dollars that are being gambled illegally. Wouldn't the United States be smart... It's if, not like if, it's all at once, though. No, this is over the over the course of four hundred billion dollars in a year. Wouldn't they? Would they not be smart to be like, okay, like let's just make this legal and tax the hell out of it? I'm just saying. So that's your solution for it, is what you're. I mean, I'm me. not. I don't want that to happen. I like just handing my dad thirty dollars or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So it's not a problem, and I don't think you can really. So I you're mean, admitting to gambling when illegally? it comes to March Madness. It's pretty much impossible for them to be like, "Hey, give us like, let me tax you on that." You right. know, it's not going to happen. But you are. You're but right. it's amazing to me because it's such a high number. So I mean, you, we're bet, we're betting billions of dollars on people who aren't making any money. Mm-hmm. I know you're a proponent for that. 
at least a little bit. We talked about it the other day. Why are you laughing at me? I'm serious. This is a good topic. Uh, no, I'm not this saying is it a isn't. Good, somebody comment. Somebody give me something to talk about. I'm, I'm, Baxter's hate leaving me out to dry over there. <laughs> so I'm just going to read the comments really quick. Uh, there's going to be something. Hashtag, no wonder why Tanner picked MU for the Final Four. Jesus. <laughs> You see what you guys did? You see what you brought upon? Bring me a beer if you come back. Oh, just kidding. He's back already. Uh, James says, FYI, 48 Kelvin is negative 375.25 Fahrenheit. I gotta drink my beer. That's cold. That's real cold. I don't know. Trevor says, It is cold. You're Trent right. Tom, Trevor says, Ted Thompson would never pay for a 32 year old running back who doesn't contribute on third down. And awesome as, it, that. as awesome it would True be. That. He's not going to Green Bay. Everybody and their mother wants to know what kind of a beer. You're drinking. I can't tell you. Yes, you can. I don't want to. It's okay. It's an okay beer. It's a blue moon. It's a blue moon. <laughs> it's not orange slicer, whatever it is. I don't think I've ever had a blue moon. What? I don't think so. That's it's why I said to give me a beer while you were over there. It's, it's, basically, it's basically the same thing as a spotted cow. Oh, well, spotted cow is great. I yeah. enjoy spotted so cow. So you'd like blue moon. Well, then why don't I have one? There's well, fine. Fridge over there. Well, fine. In Utah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, sports. Yeah, what's uh, what is a sport? That's uh, yeah, no. Oh yeah, my da- my dad says my pool costs thirty credits or Bitcoin or Monopoly money. Just because I don't gamble legally doesn't mean I should go to jail or pay taxes. Are you done? I'm done. <laughs> Baxter's back with a beer. Hi, everybody. This is his first blue moon. Yeah. yeah. Are you, are you I, done? I can get on board with that. Okay, here we go. All right. Cheers, everybody. All right, what's for lunch? What is for lunch? Are we finally to this point of the show? We are finally to this point of the Dear show. Oh, God, thank this you. This is my favorite segment. So, folks, I will give you five seconds to share it and tell people that the best segment in the history of Bruce Sports is about to happen. It's called Tanner's Making Lunch. What's for lunch? What's for lunch, big so, boy? So be, share, get the people in here. I want to hear people's reactions to, or I guess not hear, but read people's reactions to say my. Say what you need to say. Uh, to my my what's for lunch. So. So what is it? What is for lunch? Stop making me wait, Tanner. I've already shared this episode. Much it's not ago. Tuesday, but in Milwaukee here, taco specials also come out on Thursdays. They do. You're right about that. So I, I completely agree. With it's you. Taco Thursday today. Taco. It's Thursday Taco Thursday. Today. We're having tacos for lunch today. Uh, let me start with, you could do chicken, you could do beef. I'm I, going I, beef. I like, I like fish tacos, personally. I'm going beef. I love fish tacos. Mm. I got a place, so I'll, t- I'll talk to you about, we, we should go get some fish tacos. Uh, I'm going beef because there's somebody out there who's got a lot of it. Okay. And I told you he was going to come up. He always does. LeVar Ball is going to be my beef in my taco today because of his beef with Shaq, <sighs> Charles, and Michael. Mm-hmm. Three of the greats. Three of the greats. You know what's great, though? You need some cheese on that taco. You always need cheese. A taco isn't complete without some cheese. So I'm bringing Eddie Lacy for one last time, only because he ate all of the cheese on his way out from Green Bay. That's why he's 267 pounds. <laughs> but, uh, but Pete Carroll's cool with that, though. Pete Carroll's cool with that, I guess. He likes, I'm telling you, he he's likes basically hef- a fullback. He likes hefty, hefty players. He's basically a fullback. He should have been a fullback. Uh, speaking of, uh, running backs in Seattle, you got to have some lettuce on that taco. True. And he already retired, but still counts. he gets the good stuff. Still relevant. Marshawn Lynch is my lettuce today. Marshawn Lynch is the lettuce today. I Marshawn feel like Lynch everything that today. we have on the show has to have <laughs> lettuce on it. Um, you got to have some onions on there. Do you though? I'm a big onion guy. Not in my I'm a big tacos. onion guy. Maybe. You think they stink? Or, well, they make me cry. Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow's my onion today. Stinky Tim Tebow. He doesn't stink, though. He's a good player. He smells good. He bat, his batting average is a 2-1-4. Two, 2-1-4. One, four. Two, one, four. That's better than most major with leaguers. With his double hit for this two-hit two, two game major leaguers. A good batting average in, in MLB is 300. I'm not in the minors. So I'm I feel just saying. Like if I batted a, you know, 2 14, I wouldn't be terribly mad about that, personally. I'd I'm like, just saying. I'd be like, all right, I'm decent. I could have chose the Buffalo Bills as my onion. They always stink, so Anyways. that's too easy. Uh, sour cream. Love sour cream. Mm-hmm. Love sour cream. Who's sour? LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball. He can't be in this <laughs> twice. Oh, well, he thinks he can. <laughs> oh, I'll be twice anywhere and everywhere, even if it's in a taco. 
I'm LeVar Ball. I'm the greatest. My son's the greatest. This is what we do. This is what I do. I'm a one and done taco. I'm a one and done taco, okay? LeVar Ball. I'm the greatest of all time. 2.2 2 points per game. Washington <laughs> State. As a walk on. 78 70. Or 78 77. <laughs> Uh, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Yeah, no, it's great. I got uh, so plenty I have, more room for you. I have LeVar Ball. I have LeVar Ball as my beef with Shaq, Charles, and Michael. Uh, <laughs> I have Eddie Lacy as my cheese. Mm-hmm. Since he ate the rest of it, he spared a little bit for me. What on a his guy. way to Seattle. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, speaking of Seattle, is my lettuce. Uh, LeVar Ball is also my sour cream because I love sour cream. And Tim Tebow is my stinky onion because I love onions. But gosh darn it, they stink and they make me cry. Wow. Maybe, maybe I should have picked the Bills today. <laughs> you should have. You really should have. Tim Tebow doesn't make you cry. The Bills make you cry. It should have been Buffalo but sports as a whole makes you cry. Being from Buffalo? Yes. I freaking love hot sauce. Freaking love it. Not a hot sauce fan, personally. Uh, Jesse James. Jesse mm. James Decker is my hot sauce today. Ah, she is smoking hot. There you go. I had to throw that little She's like my little, height. Little nugget. She's smoking hot. And she's married. And she's never going to date me. And she's married. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure he's got at least a kid or two in but there. But we've got to put all this stuff on something. I thought we did. So I don't know if you're a hard shell guy or a soft shell guy. Well. Uh, so. I mean. I'm a soft shell guy. I've always been a soft shell guy because you can, like, fold it up and turn it into, like, a mini burrito. Sure. A cheesy uh, gordita crunch. So my soft shell tortilla, Lonzo Ball. <laughs> Speak <laughs> up. Your dad is embarrassing you, and your teammates probably hate you. Say something or tell your dad to shut up. Lonzo Ball. Okay. <laughs> my soft shell tortilla. Yummy. Wait a minute, though. Oh, my God. I, I can't cook tacos. You can't? I can't cook tacos. Jamie can cook tacos. I got to have somebody cook tacos for me. Okay. Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> okay. Because his last name is Bell. <laughs> it's the biggest cop-out ever. Oh, my gosh. It's the biggest cop-out ever. It's great. You're going to love it. It's a, it's a wonderful restaurant on the east side called Taco Bell. Phenomenal. Great they people. Have, they have they the, love me over they there. They love me over there. They're my favorite Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> Can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. LeVar Ball, I want to hang out with you. Let's be best friends. LeVar Ball is going to be named like Secretary of Swag or something. Big Baller Brand. This shirt was $10. Way cooler than Baller Brand for 60 oh, 60 or Way whatever. Team Corey Bird. wants to know if you've got a salsa. Ooh. And Chris wants you to finish your beer before the end of the show. <laughs> Uh, do I have a salsa? I should have, but I, I, I usually, so here's the deal. Your salsa could be Shakira. Here's the deal. I wanted to put avocado on there. Okay. It's not in season. It's always in season. Shut up. I got avocado <laughs> like three days ago. I wanted Go to, to the avocado grocery store. on there. I don't have $2 for an avocado. I don't know. Uh, it's worth it. I like salsa. Okay. But I already have my hot sauce on there. This is so. a taco. It's not a burrito. You know what I mean? So like, so. you can only fit so much in there. And I like extra meat. LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball is my beef. Okay. Trevor says this is the best segment ever. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I feel like it's about time to go, go get eat. some fish tacos. Chris says feast mode. Feast mode. <laughs> uh, Kurt says Lacey only uh, eats China food. Oh That's very God. true. I enjoy a good China food, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at, though, because I'm more of a Panda Express guy. I'm not like, uh, I don't have like a local like Asian joint, so I know that my friends, Aaron, um, that hate big business, Aaron, are going to yell at me for supporting a national chain, Aaron. All right. I'm done with that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm, that was my little bit. You know, I'm, I'm, it's irrelevant to this conversation. What are you doing? No. Nothing. I wasn't you doing anything. You drank your beer, so now you're going to drink my beer. I wasn't doing anything. You're done. I think you need to go eat because you're probably going to like pass out here shortly. Okay. Can I take the microphone? No, you can't take okay. the microphone. I, right. You cannot take your microphone. Goodbye. So long. I'll see you in the morning. All right, I'm back. Hope I'm you, back. Hope you find your dad. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tanner Burke, if that's your name still at this point of the show. Am can I, you, can you, can close back the, can you close us out? Can you get us to I Friday? Can. can you just shut us I down can. for the rest of the day? If you missed uh, your brackets, I'm sorry due to the CBS shutting down. It is what it is. Um, yes, be sure to like, follow, share, all that fun stuff. We're on all forms of social media. I don't know.
I That's really about it. BrewSportsNet.com, Brew Sports on YouTube. Find us on iTunes as well if you missed yes. any of our shows. It's actually it. a great thing. I did it. I used it the other day. It was great. I was driving. I was Listen like, I don't want to download. I don't want to download an hour's worth of video and like get yelled at for going over my data by Verizon or whatever. Mm. Uh, so yes, uh, feel free to download podcasts. You can save them on your phone. Yes, via iTunes. Listen to them. Download, They're subscribe all everywhere. Tell your friends. Get the notifications too, because when we go live and you don't. Tune in right away. That makes us sad. We want you here immediately. We want all of you in here commenting. Otherwise, I'm stuck here actually being forced to talk about sports, which I know nothing about. Mm-mm. Just LeVar Ball. That's all you know LeVar about. Ball. Uh-oh. My beer is rising. I love What's for Lunch. It's my favorite segment. I know it is, and so is Trevor's. Yes. All right, gang. We'll be back here again tomorrow on Halftime, 11 a.m. Central Time, live right here on Bruce Sports. He is Tanner Burke. I'm Baxter Colburn. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks so much for Go watching. Go San Diego State University. Enjoy the rest SDSU. of your day. Hope your bracket gets busted. See ya. I need a break. <laughs>